Hello everyone, welcome back to Asap from Macabre Works channel. During previous videos I explained how the air conditioning system works. Today's video is about how the heater inside your car works. Let's get this camera up close so you can see it better. So before we start with the operation, let's go over the parts that are involved. This is the engine of your vehicle. It's a radiator. Inside this housing there's a thermostat. It's a water pump. This heater hose is right here. Heater control valve or heater valve heater hoses, heater core, blend doors, blend door actuators, relays, blower resistor, and the heater forward slash AC control module, blower motor, and blower wheel, you know, it's all one piece. So these are the parts that enable you to have heat inside your car when the weather is cold outside. So now that we went over the parts, let's see how it works. When your engine is operating, because it's an internal combustion engine, it generates a lot of heat. Inside the engine itself, there are passages where coolant flows to cool it down so it doesn't overheat. There's a device called a thermostat that's usually mounted on top of an engine, but depending on the design and the type of engine, it could be somewhere else. It's easy to find it because all you have to do is follow the upper radiator hose and wherever it's located, even if it's on the side, that's going to be the location where you're going to find the thermostat. So what does this thermostat do? It maintains a constant temperature inside the engine. Normally for fuel injected vehicles it's around 195 degrees. Older carburetor engines can be anywhere 160, 180. But let's just focus on the modern engines, fuel injected ones. So 195 degrees. So as the temperature reaches 195 then the coolant starts flowing to the radiator and the colder air that is passing through it is going to cool it down and it's going to come back into the engine. And the part that is responsible for the flow is the water pump. Water pump tends to be belt driven. This is an external water pump right here that you're seeing. It's driven by a serpentine belt that is linked to the crankshaft, alternator, air conditioning, you name it. Now there are some smaller engines that have the water pump inside the timing cover and is driven by the timing belt or timing chain. So if you don't see a water pump on your vehicle and it's an internal combustion engine, you have an internal water pump. They all have it. It has to have a water pump. So now that we know that the coolant flows to the radiator, let's move on to the heater, which is what this video is about. So warm coolant flows and it reaches a heater valve. There are two types of heater valves. One is mechanical, one is electronic. They're both going to be controlled by your heater control module. So what happens is when you switch the temperature, when you move it, it's going to send a signal and it's going to pass through the relay and it's going to enable the coolant to flow so it reaches the heater core. If you look at the heater core, it almost looks like a radiator. It is just a smaller version. So as the coolant enters, it has the same principle as the AC, meaning that a colder object is going to attract heat. So we're talking about your car is colder, so the heat that is being contained in the heater core is going to enter the car. Now to make this faster, the heater blower spins and forces air through it so more, so more heat is transferred from the heater core to your car. And the heater motor is controlled through your heater control module too. When you turn the blower, it has several speeds. In order to have several speeds, the signal goes through a blower resistor. Then once it passes through the blower resistor, it's going to go through the relay and then to the blower motor so it can force the air to pass through and go through the vents. Now the unit where the AC condenser and the heater core are in has divisions inside and has blend doors that open and close depending on where you want to direct the air and what kind of air you want. You want warm air, you want cold air. So when you control it through your heater control module, the signal is going to go to the blend door actuators. But depending on the vehicle, the signal might go through your car computer first. It all depends on the manufacturer and how they design it. Especially if it has climate control, then it's going to have its own climate control module. It would go from the heater control module to the climate control module and then to the remaining devices. We focus on the simpler design, that way it's easier to understand. So let's say you want air flowing through your vents and then you move it. There's going to be a signal to one of the blend doors that controls that so air can flow through the duct and come out to your vents. Now if you want your defroster, 
then the signal is going to go to the blender that controls it so it can open the door and the air is going to flow through those dots and defrost your windshield. And as this door opens, this one will close, you know, and so forth. This is controlled by you, basically, when you're moving the dials in your dashboard. And both units, the radiator and the heater core, are going to disperse heat. This is going to disperse the heat into the atmosphere. This one's going to disperse the heat inside your car. So both of these units will bring the temperature or the coolant down. And remember, it's the thermostat that maintains it at a constant temperature inside the engine. And there you have it. You should have a better understanding about how the heater inside your car works. Thanks for watching today's video. See you next time.